the relationship between Bill Gates and China becomes toxic, and we talk about the financial links between Bill Gates and the BBC. Well, one thing we can't deny is that this whole uh, current situation, the whole health crisis, is actually exposing a lot of things that we didn't know uh, or things that we kind of knew about, but it's actually becoming more obvious. Uh, one of them is, generally speaking, the Chinese government, the Communist Party, and their role internationally, uh, but also the links that certain individuals and corporations have with China. One of these people is Bill Gates. Yeah, so thanks to uh, Breitbart and a number of other outlets, uh, we have now discovered that uh, the relationship between Bill Gates and the Chinese Communist Party is actually more toxic than we thought because he's now come out uh, to defend the Chinese government. Okay, he's probably the only person that's doing that, but you know, <laughs> feel free to do that, Bill Gates. But we're also here to expose you for who you actually are. Yeah, so according to Breitbart, this is uh, how China has turned globalist billionaires and big tech into their own spokespeople. The truth is that Beijing has been working on subverting globalist billionaires and Western big tech culture since the early days of economic engagement with that authoritarian regime. So earlier this week, Bill Gates uh, denounced the efforts to hold the CCP responsible. And uh, he said that it's just a distraction. We shouldn't really attack the Chinese government. And there are a lot of incorrect and unfair things that are being said about the communist regime. <laughs> wow. Uh, he also said that China did a lot of things right at the beginning. Now, at the same time, the Chinese state media immediately declared Bill Gates a hero, a sensible opponent of bizarre rumors spread by the American critics of the CCP and their crazy followers. Okay, crazy, sure. So at this point, anyone who has the slightest experience with the CCP knows that um, it, you know, it, it definitely kind of studies the Western media and pounces on every political and social stress point uh, that it finds and uh, celebrates Westerners who tow the Communist Party line as an, and they basically declare them as heroes. Uh, I don't understand why this is a surprise to anybody, but now it's being completely exposed. But the irony is when you hear these big tech kind of companies defending the CCP because, you know, the, 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 the China and the Chinese uh, government are not really pro uh, kind of freedom of information or freedom of press. Uh, so if, if these uh, big tech companies, the platforms are there to promote freedom of information, well, China is not in favor of it. So yeah, this was the moment when uh, earlier this week, Bill Gates uh, attacked uh, Trump in order to defend China. Interesting. Now, Bill Gates has a lot of uh, interest uh, in, in this whole game. Uh, he's uh, going out there to promote his foundation and his businesses. Uh, and uh, it's, it's not really, I don't think it's moral to, um, for someone like him or, or other globalist billionaires or uh, corporations uh, to benefit uh, from a situation where ordinary people are, being, uh, are suffering. And, um, but at the same time, the mainstream media out there, this has been out now for the past couple of days, no one's really talking about this. You know, you, you're not going to hear it from the BBC or uh, kind of Sky News. Now, we have heard that the President Xi has now appreciated the support that he's getting from uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Now, the foundation has an interesting relationship with other organizations as well. Now, one of those organizations is the BBC. The BBC uh, has uh, financial links to Bill Gates uh, Foundation. Uh, we now have uh, another article that's exposed the financial links between the foundation and the BBC. This is actually done by the Unity News Network a website that uh, has revealed that the BBC a charity receives millions in funding from Bill Gates Foundation. Last week, multi-billionaire philanthropist uh, Bill Gates appeared on the BBC and was also given extensive positive coverage across the vast billion pound taxpayer funded network. During his interview, Bill Gates referred to himself as a health expert, and this went unchallenged. Uh, now we can reveal, this is again according to Unity News Network, uh, that some startling links between the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the BBC. Uh, so there is a group called BBC Media Action. According to their own website, it's a BBC's international charity. So they're getting money from the taxpayers, but they're also begging money internationally from uh, other people too. It says, 
in a world where media can be divisive and untrustworthy. We believe in the power of media and communication to do good. Our work reaches millions of people facing insecurity, inequality and poverty. Where is the Oxford comma? That's really bad. Uh, with information that they can trust. We support the independent media essential to democracy and development. Oh, so it's, it's a lot of nonsense, basically. Uh, the BBC Media Action, it says that it's not funded by the BBC licence fee and instead relies on the generous support of the donors. And one of those donors is Bill Gates. Uh, we actually have the statement, uh, the, the kind of financial statement and the, the transactions between the foundation and the BBC. So it's not just a conspiracy theory. Now, as you can see, for the past few years, uh, the Bill Gates uh, Foundation has been giving a lot of money to certain groups, including BBC Media Action. And the issue is to empower women and girls. Why is, and also water and hygiene. And I don't understand why it should be the job of the BBC <laughs> to do any of this, but okay. You, you see like the millions and millions of uh, dollars has been transferred from the foundation to the BBC. And there's no surprise that uh, the BBC do not criticize Bill Gates. You know, they're not gonna talk about his relationship uh, with China. Uh, because, you know, they're best friends. You know, why would the BBC attack one of their best friends? It's because these organisations are supported by uh, certain uh, elitist people like Alistair Campbell. Uh, so th these are the people who used to be the puppet masters of uh, the, the whole PR game politically. And uh, Dan Wooten on uh, talk radio uh, had uh, a, a massive row with Alistair Campbell on this whole issue between the, the media and, the, the, for example, the current Boris Johnson's government and their efforts and how... They're just spreading fake news and they're just finding excuses to attack the government. And I think you're the people who become a bit deranged because you're now developing this cult of personality that is just ridiculous in what, you know, we're a parliamentary democracy. Do you understand the hypocrisy of you saying this? Alistair Campbell, the man who created the cult of personality around prime ministers in this country, ridiculous. the I man were... who sold every aspect of Tony Blair and Cherie Blair's private life to the newspapers no, when I it didn't. suited you. No, I didn't. I, 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 you I didn't sell them, what? you gave them up. No, let me, let me just tell you, for example, when, when uh, Tony and Cherie, you know, this is all in my diaries, when, they were, when she was pregnant, you know, a lot of the time we were keeping stories, trying to keep stories out of the papers. When we, we got one of the, my proudest achievements is that we got them into hospital and out of hospital without the media knowing a bloody thing about it. So, look, I know you can have your caricature and you can have your prejudice. I'm simply saying your profession at this time. The fact, frankly, you're even decided that this is your discussion of the day. Cover, I would say, cover things that are a bit more serious, like the fact that the PPE still isn't there. We do that every day, Alistair. This is a three-hour okay. show. We debate every aspect of what is a very, Fine. very serious Fine. crisis well, on this think, show. My, my point, I don't believe, generally, that the media has done much of a good job on this. Yeah, but I agree with you on that. Right, and if you haven't got the government doing a good job and you haven't got a media doing a good job holding them to account, I'm so glad that Parliament is back and at least they're able to answer, ask if you, you know... It isn't the biggest uh, issue with the media, Alistair. In fact, the TV broadcasters who use that briefing every day as an opportunity to throw meaningless gotcha questions at ministers, trying to force them in to apologise. And as Lord Alan Sugar said on this show earlier in the week, do you seriously believe Matt Hancock is attempting not to acquire PPE? Well, speaking of pointless organisations, another one, the NHS. Uh, the NHS is supposed to be there as a healthcare system to help people, to help cure people and treat them. But not really, because the, the money that we are wasting on this thing is uh, truly being wasted. And uh, there are other countries, you know, from Germany to Scandinavian countries that have you know, universal healthcare or a healthcare system that's still provided, uh, by, have a safety net in, in case you can't afford it. But they're, they're actually decentralized and localized and uh, healthcare professionals run them. So, for example, the NHS finds new ways to waste your money. Now, we've discovered, thanks to Guido Fawkes, that the NHS is now hiring uh, managers of performing arts uh, with a salary of £45,000. So this is the South West Yorkshire partnership uh, that you know, has a new priority is to uh, hire these uh, uh, what about arts and health program managers who are responsible for you know the living a larger life program? It's, it's, it's some sort of 
uh, mission program that they have. It's idiotic. Their mission statement is happiness and love, pain, longing and loss, reconciliation and redemption, our sense of self and our way of connecting to ourselves. And our... Basically, what it is, is if you get one of these jobs, uh, you'll be in charge of visual and performing arts, including crafts, dance, film, literature, music and singing, as well as <laughs> a culinary arts, gardening and sports. This is an actual job. Uh, concert halls, galleries, heritage sites, libraries, museums and theatres, incorporating uh, in, uh, social inclusion, uh, value diversity, enhanced cultural expression. Yeah, so the taxpayer's money is now being sent uh, to hire these managers, like £45,000 for someone to just do this. What? This has nothing to do with healthcare. It has nothing to do with treating patients. And this is just one example because, you know, they are wasting money at, like left, right and centre. And that's because the whole system and the structure is centralised and run by the central government. That's the biggest problem. If you had uh, independent and localised uh, clinics and hospitals, then obviously every, every group will be in charge of uh, and responsible for their own um, area. Uh, but <laughs> so this is a, a very, very weird situation that we have right now with the BBC and other organisations like the NHS and uh, the ordinary people out there are just trying to live their lives uh, and at the same time the establishments are trying to tell them how to live their lives. Now we mentioned Dan Woodson uh, of the, the Talk Radio uh, later tonight on our 8 o'clock, uh, 8 p.m. Uh, daily vlog that I have. Uh, make sure to tune in and watch that because we are also uh, going to be talking about the left-wing celebrities uh, who are working with the mainstream media to attack ordinary people, to attack uh, Boris Johnson, to attack everybody that they could because, you know, they're the angels working on this planet and we should just listen to them. Uh, so make sure to tune in at 8pm to uh, find out more about uh, that issue and uh, other things that we are exposing. Uh, as you know, we have the 5.45pm news show, this one, and then at every day at 8pm we also have a, a daily vlog, Maya's Life, which is a more of an informal format where I just uh, take you through my day and... Uh, uh, talk about uh, the political issues of the day. So if you enjoy the content, then don't forget to actually subscribe to the channel and click on that bell next to it so you get notified. Uh, we've also discovered a problem. Uh, YouTube are now um, accidentally, or their AI system is unsubscribing some of you. So every now and then you have to make sure, double check to see if you are subscribed to the channel. Uh, but also in terms of that notification bell, uh, we have also discovered the settings have changed. Uh, so you have to actually click on it and you got three options. You got all, you got personalized, you got none. Automatically, uh, YouTube just gives you that personalized option. If you click on that, you won't actually get notified. Uh, so make sure you actually click, click on all. And then if I release a new video, you'll be immediately notified. So you won't really miss uh, any of the videos. Uh, so uh, make sure to do that. And uh, don't forget to tune in at 8 p.m. for our daily vlog. I'm Maya TC. I'll see you guys in the next video.